All right, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're gonna be going over our winter thoughts again. I wanna compare a neutral Enso to a La Nina winner, uh, just to give you guys a little bit more insight into what we can expect in either case. <music> Anyways, before we get into things, be sure to smash that like button, leave a comment down below, and subscribe for more weather-related content. For today's comment of the day, I want to know what month do you think our most major winter storm will take place in? This is just a wild guess, obviously, but I am curious what you guys think. Give me a reason why, and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Let's get straight into this video, and first things first, we're taking a look at those sea surface temperature anomalies globally, like I always do in these videos. Uh, and this is just an update. We made a winter thoughts video pretty recently, but I wanted to talk about some other things as well within this one. Uh, we do have the new October ENSO modeled guidance, so that is something new that I really wanted to go over with you guys. But here is this sea surface temperature anomaly. And as you can see, that La Nina is actually developing very nicely. You can see that offshore of South America, and that extends all the way to uh, kind of the middle of the Pacific there. Now we also have another blue area that kind of horseshoes around. We can see it touching Hawaii, kind of reaching California and then back north towards the kind of coastal regions of Canada and Alaska there. That is a negative PDO and that allows for colder air temperatures to develop above it and really make its way into the United States. This does oftentimes mean a colder winter for a lot of the United States is about to take place. We also have a very warm Atlantic, but let's take a look at the seven day change real quick. And as you can see, the ENSO region is kind of spotty. We have some red regions and some blue regions. It's kind of mixed, but overall it's been cooling for the most part. Now, as we head further north in that region, offshore of the west coast and portions of, of Canada and Alaska there, we also have some cooling taking place as well. And then offshore of the eastern United States, we do have some smaller pockets of cooling as well for those regions. Now let's take a look at the Atlantic Ocean, and this is not our seven day change, this is just the sea surface temperature anomalies. And as you can see, overall, it's mostly warmer for, for many of these regions. Uh, we do have some colder waters offshore of Newfoundland and a little bit offshore of North Carolina, but outside of that, I mean, mostly warmer than normal for most of these regions. Now the seven day change for the Atlantic, we do have those two blue regions in where we have below normal sea surface temperatures. We've also seen a lot of that cooling take place over the past seven days. Now this is our Nino 3.4 index, and this is the chart that shows us what things are looking like for the El Nino or La Nina. You can see there's a much more bolder line there. That is our neutral line. So if it goes above that, that's El Nino status. If it goes below it, that's La Nina status. And as you can see, we've really lowered over the past month or so, or maybe even a little bit more. Uh, we've really descended, and now we're at 0 0.7 approximately, which is two below kind of a neutral ENSO territory. Usually you look at negative 0.5 to positive 0.5 to be a neutral ENSO. Anything above or below is either a, a El Nino or La Nina. So at negative 0 0.7, we are now pretty much in a weak La Nina for the most part. Now, what we're going to do in a moment is we're going to move on and we're going to compare two graphics that show us what a La Nina looks like and then what an El, or sorry, a neutral ENSO looks like and compare those two. Now, the first one here is the La Nina, and usually what this encourages is a lot of cold air over the north central United States. A trough either sets up in the central or eastern United States oftentimes. The southern United States tends to be warmer and drier, and you can see that subtropical jet down there, that kind of dashed one on this graphic. I have no idea where this graphic comes from. I just found it on Google, so I don't know exactly what the source of this is, but I thought it portrays very nicely what a La Nina oftentimes looks like. Uh, and this subtropical jet usually does not connect with the polar jet in this type of a winter, a La Nina winter. And that is what creates those dry conditions there for the south central and the southeastern United States because you don't have that storm track from this subtropical jet. In an El Nino or a neutral ENSO, these two jets connect and we see a lot of precipitation move along the polar jet in the eastern half of it. And that would bring above normal precipitation for the south central and southeastern United States. We don't have that obviously. Now, a neutral ENSO, like I said, you can see the subtropical jet heads up into the United States. The polar jet is still over the eastern or central United States. And those two combine bringing wet conditions for the southeast, cold conditions up north. And usually those two interact to bring a lot of snowfall. In a, in a stronger La Nina, you wouldn't have that. Now, if we stay in the weaker territory of a La Nina, it is probable that we could oftentimes see these two jets kind of combine. 
and that would bring plenty of snowfall throughout the winter. Regardless, there will be obviously snowfall throughout the winter, but that just encourages a lot more. Now here is the North Atlantic chart. And as you can see, we've really consistently been about positive 0.5 for the entire Atlantic. It hasn't really changed too much. And we've been slightly warmer than normal for the entire Atlantic for quite a while now. Now here is our ENSO forecast. This one is from September, but we have one from October in just a moment to show you guys. And as you can see, we're expected to maintain a weak La Nina status and then eventually hover around neutral by time we're reaching next spring. Now here is the one that's updated for October here. And this one is more of a probability chart. And at the bottom, you can see like SON at the very left. That's September, October, November. That's our fall season. And as you can see, it's a 90% chance that we're in a La Nina. And then about, I mean, maybe like a 7% chance of a neutral. And so we're obviously in a La Nina. So it's not very probable that we, you know, warm up at this point. Now, DJF is what we're really looking for. And it's to the kind of top left of the little season word down there that you can see. And as you can see, we actually are at about an 87% chance of having a La Nina for the winter now at this point. So it is highly probable that we have a La Nina this upcoming winter, which is obviously was expected and very, very interesting. Now, what we're going to do here is move on and we're going to take a look at our monthly forecast from the CFS model. We're actually going to take a look at October, so the rest of October, November, December, January, and February. Uh, and then we're actually going to take a look at the precipitation forecast for the winter months as well. All right, so here is the rest of October, and as you can see, we're expecting kind of cold in the southeast, and that is mostly due to those colder air masses that are heading in. We will see a lot of cold out west still, and that's going to allow for colder than normal conditions up there. The northeast and the north central United States are going to be more like neutral to above normal temperatures. Now, by the time we reach November, this is kind of the outlook right now from our CFS model, and it's expecting the southwest to be warmer than normal, as you can see. And then kind of the eastern United States to be colder than normal, even the north central. So it should, and, and this is, you know, obviously a longer range model, but according to this, it should uh, really cool down for a lot of those more northern regions that have not been seeing too much below normal temperatures. As you can see, there's very cold temperatures in western Canada and southern Alaska as well. Here is December. Again, cold in the east, warm in the west is what is expected here. And then by the time we reach January, it becomes an interesting but very La Nina-like pattern where we have warmer than normal conditions in the south and colder than normal conditions in the north. So just straight north to south. This is compared to normal because I know a lot of people are going to be like, well, obviously it's colder in Montana than it is in Texas. But the thing is, this is compared to what is your normal temperature. So yes, on normal, it is colder in Montana and it is warmer in Texas. But compared to normal, Texas, let's say they're, you know, I don't even know what their average high, it, it really depends on where you're at. But in the winter, let's say you're in Southern Texas and your average high temperature is like 65 or 70. Well, you might be more like 70 or 75. Well, in Montana, your average high temperature might be like 15 degrees or like 20 degrees. I don't exactly know what it is. I think it's a little warmer than that, but whatever. Let's say it's 20 for this instance. Well, if your average temperature is 20, you might be at more like 15 uh, or, or, you know, 12 degrees Compare, by looking at this map. So it is compared to what is your average temperature. Let's take a look quickly at that precipitation forecast. And for December, we get kind of more, more storminess up there in the Northwest and in the kind of Ohio Valley region. This is very typical for La Nina and then dry in the South, but especially the Southeast there. Again, same thing here on January, just a little more dry. And then in February, we kind of break away with a little bit more of some East Coast storminess. Uh, but also still just very stormy in the north and very dry in the south. Again, that, that subtropical jet not moving in during the winter plays a massive role in this. Anyway, let's just go over our confidence tab. We're at a three out of six. This will move up throughout the fall months as we get closer to winter. But for now, we're more around, you know, 40 to 50% confident because we're so far away still. For today's comment of the day, I asked you guys yesterday, how would you rank this past October based on how it's gone? And James Marr said, I would rank it a five out of 10. Uh, warm and dry, but warm October statistically mean cold and snow winters, so we will see. And, and that definitely is true that statistically a warmer October does give you a better shot at um, a cold and snowy winter. Don't exactly know why that is, but it's mostly, I'm pretty sure, um, I, I've always felt like it's due to the snowpack building up, up north and, and more ice developing. Because if we're warmer than normal, that must mean there's usually a positive AO, which brings colder conditions over the Arctic, which helps build that polar vortex before it weakens during the winter. 
For today's patron island of the day, I will thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our Platinum patrons, Bill Kreitz, James Wade, Dovey Nagel, Lear the Pan, Mandy Birchfield, and Patrick Strickland as well. I would also like to thank our Diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Cotalesa, Catbite, Charles Stinnett, Cindy Klein, Alan Goodmaven, Bill Dallas, Gary, John Colisi, Dwight Phelan, Stephen Cronenthal, and Thomas D. Barr as well. If you'd like to join this very awesome patron entry of the day, you can do so by joining our very amazing Patreon page in the description and in the pinned comments down below. I would also thank our channel members, Catbite, Stephen Fan, and Jeremy Cox as well. This will be located next to the subscribe button down below if you are interested in joining. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to smash that like button, leave a comment down below, and subscribe for more weather-related content. I will see you guys in the next video.